October 15, 2013 at 8.12 a.m., the island of Bohol in the Philippines was struck by a magnitude 7.2 earthquake. It resulted to more than 200 deaths and infrastructure damage, was estimated at $50 million. This earthquake caught everyone by surprise because it occurred in an area where there is no previously mapped fault. The eventual discovery of the fault that generated this earthquake can be attributed to Mr. Howie Severino, a news anchor of GMA Channel 7. On October 19, Mr. Severino showed some field photographs to Professor Mahar Lagme, a geology professor at the National Institute of Geological Sciences in the University of the Philippines. Upon initial interpretation, Professor Lagme advised Mr. Severino to contact the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology. On November 21, it was finally confirmed by FIVOLX that the October 15 earthquake was triggered by a previously unknown fault we now know as the North Bohol Fault. Nine years since the earthquake, what did we learn about the North Bohol Fault? The earthquake resulted in extensive ground uplift or subsidence of some coastal areas, which can have long-lasting implications for the island's coastal resources. The massive damage to the coastal environment includes the collapse of many coral reefs or domes most likely after being compromised by intense tremor and extensive underwater cracks across coral reef formations. Substantial ground subsidence was also observed in the town of Tubigon, which can put coastal communities at risk of sea level rise. Coastal uplift in the towns of Maribijoc and Loon resulted in the loss of intertidal habitats such as mangroves and seagrass beds. The study of Rollin and others in 2015 mapped the, the extent of the loss of these intertidal habitats. In this figure, we can see the elevation profile of the coast in the towns of Bastico, Pigoti, and Punta Cruz, which are marked by the green line. The red line is the elevation profile after the earthquake. These sites show an uplift of more than 1 meter, and Punta Cruz showed the highest uplift at 1.83 meters. This figure also shows the change in shoreline positions after the earthquake. Pigoti showed the largest change where the shoreline moved almost 500 meters from its previous position. Because of these, the towns of Loon and Maribijoc lost 42 hectares of mangrove forest, 135 hectares of seagrass beds, and 148 hectares of coral reefs. The economic value of the loss of these intertidal habitats is estimated at around $4.4 million per year. The lives of coastal fishers were also affected. Because of the uplift, they have to lift their motorized boats and walk large distances for dry docking. At the time of the earthquake, the only known fault on the island was the East Bohol Fault. Field investigations showed that the ground rupture of the earthquake is located 35 kilometers north of the East Bohol Fault. The study of Romando and others in 2019 reported a detailed mapping of the ground rupture of the 2013 Bohol earthquake as well as the discovery of prehistoric earthquakes associated with the North Bohol Fault. The ground rupture was mapped using LIDAR data acquired by the University of the Philippines Training Center for Applied Geodesy and Photogrammetry between November 11, 2013 to December 4, 2013. LIDAR stands for Light Detection and Ranging, and it uses lasers to map elevation. The constructed topographic map from LIDAR had a 1-meter resolution, which can give accurate measurements of the ground rupture. Results showed that the maximum height of the scarp was around 5 meters, and it was located in the town of Inabanga. This means that the maximum uplift from the earthquake was around 5 meters. By digging into the fault, they were also able to identify at least two prehistoric earthquakes generated by the North Bohol Fault in the past 12,000 years. However, the authors emphasized that there are likely more earthquakes, and the geological evidence for these earthquakes was not preserved in their digging sites. From an archaeological point of view, the oldest church in Bohol, which was built in 1595, was destroyed during the 2013 earthquake. Since there are no reports of similar damage to the church since its construction, it is possible that 418 years before the 2013 earthquake, there may have been no earthquakes in the area that had the same intensity of ground shaking that destroyed it in 2013. The 2013 Bohol earthquake was undoubtedly one of the most destructive earthquakes in the Philippines and it showed how large earthquakes affect the landscape. 
The study of Rollin and others in 2015 reported coastal uplift in the municipalities of Maribajoc and Loon. In this study by Bazin and others in 2022, they examined the ground deformation in Maribajoc and Loon after the earthquake by analyzing the changes in shoreline positions as well as determining the rate of vertical land movement using satellite images. In Loon, they examined the shoreline positions from 2014 to 2018 and observed a landward shift in the shoreline position. This means that the shoreline is slowly going back to its position before the earthquake at a rate of around 4.36 meters per year. In Maribajoc, they also examined the shoreline from 2014 to 2018 and observed the same trend as Loon. The shoreline is also slowly going back to its position before the earthquake at a rate of around 1.69 meters per year. This landward shift of the shoreline was attributed to land subsidence. By using a technique called persistent scatterer interferometric synthetic aperture radar, they determined a subsidence rate between 2 to 8 mm per year in Loon and Maribajoc.